Well, praise the Lord. God's good. Amen. 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 If anybody's having a problem seeing, you can move forward. I want you to see this little skit this morning that's been put together. Amen. It's got a lot of good meaning to it, and I hope you catch the point. Amen. Let's start. Well, good morning, family. How's all my kids? How's all my kids and my grandma doing here today? Well, it looks like you got a pretty little Christmas set up here. We got some presents. That's really nice. But you know, there's some people out there that doesn't have any presents today. Amen. You're one of them. Well, we do now. Amen. So I want us to remember what is the real reason for the season today. Do you know? What is it, Michaela? Ma'am, giving to the poor, that's one. But whose birthday is today? Let's say that. Lariah, who is it? Who? Jesus. Jesus. I think we ought to sing happy birthday to him right quick. You want to? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Well, you know what I think we need to do? I think we need to have a prayer. I mean, thank God for the presents and thank him for the tree. Mostly, thank him for his son. Because his son did come and die for all of us, right? There's so many people out in the world today that don't even know who Jesus is. Do you know that? And I'm so thankful that we do. So let's, let's give him thanks for what he's done. Can we do that? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to be here with these presents today. I ask that you would bless these kids with their presence, bless everyone everywhere, and again, happy birthday to you, dear Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Grandma, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. And you? I'm doing fine. Everything been going well? Uh-huh. You ready to listen to a story? I'm ready. Let's hear a story. Yeah. We like stories. Long, long time ago, many, many years ago, there was a young baby born in a manger. He came for the purpose of saving the world. His name was what? Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Jesus is the name of our Savior. So, why did he come? Not to bring presents, but to give us all a present so that we can be saved. The greatest through Jesus, present. The greatest present. Yeah. So, why did he come? My who goodness, is who is that? Merry Christmas! <laughs> what are y'all doing, you bunch of brats? What are we doing? We're yeah, what are you doing? I'm trying to tell a story. Well, tell a story about what? Jesus. Jesus, who's that? Well, he's the man that came to save our sins. Save our sin? Looks like you need to <laughs> You need the one to talk. Who is this old Jesus dude anyway? Well, let's see. Well, right now today's his birthday. His birthday? Mm -hmm. How old is he? Well, let's see. About 2,000 years old. Oh, you <laughs> crazy old lady. You crazy. There ain't no way somebody's 2,000 years old. Yeah, there is. Where does he live at? I want to go see In heaven. Him. Heaven? There's only one way to get there, and you've got to be saved first. We in heaven now. Like we, we in paradise. Look at here, guys, man. We got it going on. Yeah, we in right. paradise, that's, yeah. That stuff's going to send you to hell. Hell, what's that? <laughs> it's a fiery furnace. When I lived with you, it was hell. Oh, hell. yeah, really? Yeah. Man, what have you brats been doing? Huh? What y'all been doing? Y'all can't talk? The cat got your tongue or what? Huh? Where's your, where's your thug brother at? Huh? He's in his room. Why don't one of you go get him? Well, 
Well, First let me <coughs> let me tell you something, Sue. I still love you. You do? Yeah. Well. But see, there's been a lot of changes since I've seen you last, yeah. Well. And I can... Well, has there ever been? There has been, hasn't uh -huh. there? And see, I've given my life to the Lord. Do you know who that is? No, I don't See, know. we're celebrating the Lord's birthday today, actually. Uh -huh. And this is what Christmas is about. I can remember the times that you and me didn't celebrate Christmas the right way. Yeah, let's still go. Let's no, 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 I need here. to. We're going to dance in the spirit, maybe. Spirit. Do you know what that is? Well, no. You don't know what that don't is? Spirit, I know it's like <laughs> yeah, that's a spirit in a bottle, all right. But it's the wrong, it's the wrong kind of spirit. See, I can deny that because I have Jesus on my side now. See, I have a church, and I got people that come and listen to me preach because I preach about the Word of God. And you know what? There's been people like you come in church before and be saved. Do you know what saved is? It means they're forgiven of all of their sins. It means that their lives is cleaned. It means they have given themselves to God. And they've gotten themselves cleaned up. Now, may I ask you a question? What's that? What kind of fun do you have out of this life that you have now? Well, it's fun while you're doing it, but after you get home at night, you, you're praying to the toilet. Yeah, you, know, you, you talk remember, to the you talk. You remember them I remember talking to the toilet every yeah. morning. But let me guess what guess what I do now? It was the throne, I talk to the. It yeah, it was the wrong throne, throne right? was it? But I talk to the Lord every morning Good now. Lord. I can remember. I can remember speaking to the commode every morning. Yeah. I can remember. Yeah. I can remember having good old times on that toilet. I thought, yeah. but see, you know, and we tried to work our marriage job. But remember, we just couldn't get things right. straightened up. Right. But you know why? You, you want me to tell you why we couldn't get things straightened out? Because we didn't know who God was. Well. And I mean, I don't know the whole purpose or the plan of the whole situation, why it worked like that. But since that time, God has showed me the right way. The right way. Yeah. And, you know, I pray for people like you. And, you know, I even pray for my son because he's just, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a thug well, I don't, even wanna, I don't even want to say that word, but he's not where he needs to be. But I have hope in him. Do you? Do you have any hope in our son? You know, this is our son that we had. You know, y'all say that God does miracles or your God does miracles. And boy, that, that, that well, a miracle. okay, now I think, I think I'm going to let you answer that yourself. Do you see a miracle in me? Something's in me. Yeah. It sure is. Okay. Who could have done that besides God? Have you ever thought about that way? Well, if there's really a devil, I don't really think he could do that. You're right. You're right. And as long as you know the difference between the devil and God, you have a jump start there. Well. So, you know, these kids has got presents. Do you like the little tree and the presents today? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Well, now, really, it is pretty. But now, can I say this also? What's that? They're not brats. Oh, let me, me tell you why they're, they're not brats. No, they're not brats or rats. Let ah. me tell you why. Why is that? Because they're saved. Y'all are saved. Do you know what saved means? Oh, really? This is the only thing saved means from day to day. Grandma, what does that mean? Tell her what saved means. Saved means that God has forgiven you for your sins, and then you can live a Christian life. Christian life. In other words, you say you can have a better life than this? Yes. yes. I'd like to know today, would you guys like to have a better life? Well, it depends. Okay, would you at least, um, what, what, what well, let me, let me ask you this. Would you at least go with us this morning? Can we have about an hour of your time? You know what we would like to do? Now, I want you to leave your beer and your cigarette here, okay? And these kids are saved, and they know that they have some presents waiting for them. But I believe these kids are going to be okay this morning with saying, you know what, let's go give this, let's go find a homeless person. And by the way, are you homeless? You look like you. Oh, are you? So you ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, you're not homeless, you're ho, ho, ho. Okay. Well, now I think, I think we all know this morning, I believe we all realize this morning that there's a lot of homeless people out there that needs help. Amen. And you need help, and I'm not saying that critically. I'm just saying you need help, he needs help, I needed help, and I got the help. But you know what I had to do? I had to give in and I had to ask. I had to put the pride away. And I had to say, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm asking for forgiveness today. But now I just want you to think about that as we go out and visit the homeless this morning. You, right, you, put, you put all your stuff down? Okay, okay. Yeah, get up, Bubba. 
Okay, now I want you kids to grab you a present or two right there. And I don't believe we're going to have to go far today to find homeless people. So. No, because they're all over the place. Have everybody noticed that? Mm -hmm. Let's go looking around this morning. And come on, I'd like for you guys to go with us this morning. I'd like to go out and go around the neighborhood. We don't have to, hey, we don't have to go to Houston. We're just going to stay right here, okay? We're not going to be gone long. Have you seen people? Have you seen homeless people in Orange? Come on, have you? Yeah. There are. There are. There's plenty of homeless people in Orange. I even seen a lady the other day, listen to this, in a cardboard house. And she was this, I went and talked to her. She was the sweetest thing. I said, ma'am, I got to ask you a question. How do you smile? But you know what? We're going to go try and find her, and I want you to hear what she told me because I remember where she was at. Let's go see if she still be there today, okay? I know it's cold out today. Now, guys, remember, I want you to remember that she's homeless, okay? She might be dirty. She might even smell a little bit, but I want you to get past that, okay? Come on, Pastor. Let's go. Okay. Well, here we go. Let's go looking around and see if we can find somebody. Well, well, well. Let's see if she's home. I can't see in there. Ma'am, can we get you to come out? We'd like to see you. I'm Pastor Steve. I was here the other day. Can you stand up? How are you this morning? Good. You are still smiling. I got to ask you something, my friend. How do you smile like that when you... It's cold in there. And you even, bless your heart, you're kind of dirty this morning. Amen. How do you, tell me how you smile. I got Jesus. <laughs> now, I want you to look at this house, guys. And I want you to look at these clothes. Look at her face. You can tell she hadn't had a bath in a month of Sundays. Amen. And she's dirty. Amen. And she's smiling. That's more than you can do. We got some presents for you, my friend. Would you accept them from us? Sure. Now, the only, you know why we brought these presents? Jesus told us to bring them. Amen? You go ahead and put them in your house, will you? Now, I'd like for you to have a little visit with us this morning, if you don't mind. What's your name, by the way? Monica. Monica. Do you, I want you to meet Dee. And I want you to meet Lariah. Here's Michaela. This is Bubba. And I don't know if you can believe this or not, but this is my ex-wife. Oh, my goodness. Is right. <laughs> and her name is Ho, Ho, Ho. No, her name is Sue. But here's what I want to say today. We've talked these two into coming with us. Look at, look at this smile. Look at that smile. Homeless. Dirty. Are you hungry, baby? Yes, sir. Hungry. Freezing to death. But why is she smiling? Did you guys hear what she said? What did she say? She said she knows Jesus. She got Jesus. She's got Jesus. Well, have you guys seen enough? Would you like to accept Jesus today? Yes, sir. Well, could I get you to bow down, please? See, God's good. God's good. Sister, I want to ask you to come over here with me. And we're going to pray for these two today, okay? Father, in Jesus' name... We thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. Lord, you see my little son here, and you see my ex-wife. And Lord, you see that they're giving their hearts to you this day, Lord. And Lord, it's more than just your birthday today, Lord. It's a big celebration day, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you would bless them. I ask that you would keep them safe, Lord. I ask that you would help them, Lord, to convert their ways, Lord. Now, Lord, we are asking for a repentance prayer right now, Lord. Lord, help them, Lord, to accept you as their Lord and their Savior, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you for that in Jesus' name, if we could say amen. 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 Could you all stand, please? I want all of you to go line up over here on the rug, please. We're going to take Monica with us this morning. Amen. I believe that that homeless person this morning has made a big difference in Sue and Bubba's life. What do you think? I think he's really... Now, I give the glory to God today for this. Amen. I think people were so privileged, were so honored 
we truly forget sometimes where our blessings come from. And there is a lot of homeless people, and there is a lot of lost people. But I know one thing. My Bible tells me, the song tells me, if God saved a wretch like me, Amen. he can save a wretch like this. Amen. Amen. In saying that this morning, Christmas is a special day. Christmas is a wonderful day. It's not only Jesus' birthday, but we should be so happy this morning that new lives has become into the kingdom of God. And we got to pray for this nation, this country, this world. There is people being converted right now to the gates of heaven. I don't care how bad they look. I don't care what they did. I don't care if they smoked. I don't care if they drank. I don't care if they cussed. I don't care if you've been to prison. I don't care what you have done in your life. God says, guess what? It's history. Now, I want you to realize this morning that my Bible tells me that God says he would take all sins and he would throw them into the waters. He would throw them into the oceans. It's you that keeps remembering your sins. Amen. It's not God. Amen. In saying that, Sue and Bubba, you're the new creation now. Amen. Praise God. And you realize who God is. Amen? Amen. And you know that all your sins have been forgiven. Now, what do we got to do to stay that way? Follow Jesus. We got to go to church. We got to read the Bible. We got to be loving. Now, neither one of you really wanted to go see Monica, did you? How come? You almost thought you was a little better than her, didn't you? Huh? Did you think you was a little bit better than her? Now, do you think God would be happy with that? Now, you remember what I said a long time ago? I had to dump my pride. See, that's pride. We have to remember that God loves everybody. God loves you, 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 and you just the same as he loves me. Amen? Amen? And in saying that, I believe we need to tell God this morning how happy we are, how joyful we are, how blessed we are, how privileged, how honored that we are to be able to even serve a God like we serve. I don't know if anybody got anything out of this. Some of you might have thought it was silly. Some of you might have thought it wasn't right. Some of you thought it was just the best thing you've seen in a long time. But I do want you to remember this this morning. It's the point. It was the point of the actions that we did this morning. You know, we do go out and we visit the homeless. Amen? And we do go out and we minister to the lost. Did you know there's some lost people in Orange? Did you know there's homeless people in Orange? Well, Pastor, I can't go to Houston. You don't have to go to Houston. You can do it right here. Orange, Bridge City, Orangefield. Guess what, buddy? They're everywhere. We don't have to travel away. God also tells us, work in your own land. Amen? We got to continue to save souls. It's what it's all about. I told you at the beginning of church this morning, and it's sad to say, I can remember when this church would fill up. I'm talking, Brother Bobby, Sister Barbara, you remember. I'm talking. Why am I saying that? Am I hurt because they're not here today? Yeah. Yeah. Because of their souls. Is it because to fill the church up? No. That's not what it's about. And I know that there's other people out here this morning getting saved as we speak this morning. You know, they say somebody dies every second, somebody's born every second. Amen. I totally believe today that somebody's getting saved every second. Amen. Here's the key. How do we stay there? How do we stay saved? All of you's heard this before. Once saved, always saved. I'm here to step on your toes this morning. That's not true. Once saved, you must stay saved. Right. You know, God gives us that eternal promise, does he not? He says, here I am. Here's your faith. You get out and you exercise it. I have saved you from the world. God says, I expect you to keep your part of the bargain. God says, all I ask you to do is live for me. God says, all I ask you to do. Remember this this morning, folks. We got to read our Bible. We got to go to church. 
We got to be compassionate. We got to love everybody. We got to accept Jesus into our life. Is there anyone here this morning that really doesn't know Jesus as your personal Savior? I mean, really, really, really know Him. Now, there's a difference between knowing Him and truly knowing Him. Now, are you ready to serve God today? Now, I don't mean to get off this a little bit, but I got something I want to say about this. Next Saturday evening is our little New Year's Eve get-together. I'd love for you to be here. We're going to have a lot going on. I'm also going to speak about how the church needs to be. Amen. And I believe God is ready for his church people to grow and go. Amen. I think I've come to the point in my life, if we're not ready to grow, and I don't want this to sound ugly, I think we need to go. We have to grow in what God has for us. Amen. And I want you to really think about this week, and I really want you to pray, and I really want you to meditate upon what God means by that. Grow and go. Is it grow and go with him, or is it not grow and go away? I want you to figure that out. We're going to have a little, a little bit of a meeting in the special that we have next week. I'd like for you to be here. I know you'll enjoy it. Amen. <laughs> but God is good. And I want to close with this this morning. It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to you just a little bit about Christmas. You've seen everything. I'm not going to hold you much longer. But I want you to know that today we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We rejoice that Christ is born and reborn. Amen. Does everybody know that Jesus is alive? Amen. Jesus is alive. Jesus died on that cross for you and I, but he came back because God said, You're not done, son. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Here's what I got to say to that. You're not done, guys. You got more to do. There's plenty more to do. I don't care your age. I don't care your color. I don't care your disability this morning. I don't care about none of that. And sh believe me, he don't either. God says it's time. Amen. In saying that this morning, you know, in this little skit that we played this morning, there was so many points to that. We got to get out. We got to teach the world. We got to preach to the world. We can't all be preachers, but God says we can all be an example. God says we can all be a witness. God says that we can get out and proclaim the word of him. You know, in Luke 2.10, it says, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Luke 2.10, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. Luke 2.11 says this. This is good today. Listen carefully. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Are you thankful today that we have a Messiah? Are you thankful today that we have a Lord? You know, probably just about most of the people in this place today is fighting so many battles. You're fighting problems at home. You're fighting problems on the job. You're even fighting sometimes with your own family. Amen? And do you know that the devil enjoys that did you hear me the devil enjoys that he loves to see you go through things he loves to see you bitter he loves to see you argue he loves to see oh how about marital breakups oh my lord amen you know the statistics say that it's higher in the churches than it is in the world can you figure that this morning yeah it was it's flip-flopped now amen I believe that if we stand up for God and say, God, help this marriage, it's going to make it. So many other things. Some of us is in a financial bind. Amen? Some of us might be in a spiritual bind. Some of us might be in a loneliness bind. No matter the situation this morning, God says, I love you. God says, I'll take care of the problems. But you know what we got to do, people? We got to give it to him we got to give it to him. So in closing this morning, I'd like to have an altar call. And I'd like to call you up to the altar here this morning. I'm not going to embarrass you. 
I'm not going to come and tackle you. I'm not even going to call your name out. But I am going to point you out to the Lord this morning. He knows that you're here. You can, you can come up here and be unspoken as far as that goes because you know. You know what you'll be coming here for. But I want you to listen to this carefully this morning, guys. If we bring our problems and we bring our burdens to God this morning, I want you to leave them here, please. Please do that for me, especially for him. Don't bring three burdens up here and carry just one back with you. Because to me, I think you've wasted your time. And I don't like wasting God's time. So with all heads bowed and all eyes closed this morning, the altar is open. Are you compassionate enough to go to the homeless and do that? Well, I've seen some people in the world be able to go do that. That's wonderful. But they don't talk about Jesus. See, that's, that's the rest of it. We got to be able to minister. We got to be able to be that example that God wants us to be. Are you fighting depression this morning? Are you fighting loneliness this morning? Are you fighting spiritual battles this morning? Are you fighting pride problems this morning? How about your job? How about your marriage? How about your family? How about anything else that's on you today? I have the answer for you today. And it's called Jesus Christ. Because I hope you realize something this morning. He is here at this altar today. And bless your hearts. He hears you. He knows your pleas. He's ready for your self this morning. I want to give another 30 seconds of silence. I want you to think about what I've said this morning. You know, we play a song sometimes. It says, some are kneeling at the altar, some are crying. Father with son, mom with daughter. It's so true. Some of you that's already up here this morning is fighting some battles that you don't know what to do about. But your answer is on its way. God says the answer's coming. God says first thing you got to do is admit to me what's going on. Now, why did I say that? Like God doesn't know what the problem is? No, that's not why I said that. See, God wants us to admit to him. God wants us to bring these problems. He says, admit them to me. I totally believe this morning that you got to admit them to him. And he will definitely hear your cries. So just take, a, just take a few seconds there, and I want you to think of what all is on you, what all is bothering you, what all is pulling you down, and I want you to go ahead and give them to God this morning. I want to also say this morning, I know that some of us in the church this morning, some of us has lost loved ones this past year. Yes. I lost a brother in February. But, you know, I know that he's in a better place because he's not suffering any longer. And I know some of you lost wives, some of you lost mothers, some of you lost sisters, whatever the case may be. Always remember that God is still with you no matter what we have to go through. So just, just let God take the depression away from you because he will. I'm, I can't tell you that we won't mourn because we do. But God is still there. God is still there. And the meaning to this little play this morning is no matter what kind of a life that we've come from, what things we've been through in our lives, whether you know, we lose our loved ones or we suffer with sicknesses or whatever the case may be, alcoholism, you know, there's so many things that we all go through in life. But God can take that from you if you want to be let it let him take it from you. It's your call. But don't let the devil whip you. You know, and there's so many people, we have to understand this too, there's so many people out there that's a lot worse off than any of us. There's people up there this morning in Houston, Texas at the Children's Hospital oh, yes. that has children that's dying with cancer. So, you know, we need to be thankful that we're still up and we're still going and our children are still going and stuff like that. And yes, we don't know why things happen, but they do. 
but we just got to accept it. God has told me, because I lost both of my parents within three months, and it was a very, very hard thing to go through. But you know what? God gave me that strength. No matter what you go through, God will give you strength. But if you don't let God give it to you, he's a gentleman. He's not going to shove it on you. So I'm telling you this morning, if you really want to be free, you really want to be happy, here's your opportunity. God says in the Bible that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Lord, help us. Do we need strength in this old world? Oh, Lord, do we need strength. I like joy. Amen. Do you like joy? That's right. For the ones that don't know this, once here a while back we had some little stickers about a big rounds of dime, I guess. It said joy. And by the time the sermon was over that morning, I had them things all over my face. They come up and keep sticking them on me because I had the joy of the Lord. And I want. We don't have to wear stickers. We don't have to walk outside with stickers all over our face. You know what you got to do? Just shine like God shines. God says you're the light. Amen. You're the light of the world because God says that we have to shine, help him shine that light of the world. Amen. I want to pray for all these people that's up here this morning. Is there anyone else that needs to come forth? I'd like to ask that you would. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much for the ones that have come to the altar this morning, Lord. Now, Lord, you know each and every problem because, Lord, they've admitted every one of them to you. Now, dear God, we know that you're hearing these prayer requests right now, Lord. I ask that you'd touch them all in a very, very special way. Lord, you hear the weeping that's going on right now, Lord. And, Lord, we know the joy of the Lord is our strength. And, Lord, I pray for joy. I pray for strength. I pray for peace. And I pray for wisdom in these families today, Lord. Lord, you see this bickering, this arguing, these financial binds, these spiritual binds, these health issues that's going on right here in this body today, Lord. Well, Lord, we're just asking, Lord, for your help. And we know that you are our only hope. You are our only way out of this. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Help us, Lord, to be overcomers. Help us to do all that we can do. Help us, Lord, to stay on that straight and narrow path. I ask for all this in Jesus' name. If everybody could say amen.